All right. Welcome, welcome, federal employees. It's always a pleasure. Today, we have a special treat. We have the CEO of GEHA. Now, it, his name is Art. Niza, is that you say your last name, Niza? Yep, yep. Perfect. And right off the top, before we dive into all kinds of great things about what federal employees should be thinking about when it comes to health insurance in this open season, all kinds of very helpful things. How do you say, how do people normally say, is it GEHA, GEHA, do, do they say G-E-H-A? How do you say it? We're, we're not going to give the wrong pronunciation because we don't want people, like, it'll be like a, you know, one of those worms in your ear that you can't yeah. get out. So it's, it's G-E-H-A. G-E-H-A Perfect. is the way we say it. That's our name. And so we'll, we'll stick to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And that was one thing prepping for this. I was like, I, I, I don't, I want to get the name right. So, okay. Well, good to know. That's a great you place to start. You, you got it. One point. <laughs> yeah. So Art, I think a great place to start. Go ahead and, and introduce who you are, kind of what role you play. And of course, what uh, G-E-H-A, what role the organization plays as well in the federal space. Sure. So uh, Art Nizza, as you mentioned, I've been the CEO of GEHA for a little over a year now. Um, 35 years of healthcare experience. I've been on the provider side, um, integrated delivery systems. We have both providers and health plans, and now obviously running uh, the second largest uh, health plan in the FEHB space. Um, 86 year history. Um, so so clearly a uh, a major legacy in FEHB and uh, very proud to be uh, of Viva. So we are not just a not-for-profit, but we're a voluntary employee benefit organization. And that is really our DNA. Our focus is federal employees, military retirees. And uh, that's what we live and breathe every day. Perfect. And I love that. And we were talking you know, before this, of course, I, I live and breathe this stuff all the time. I love helping feds. And, and just so all the viewers and listeners know, I'm certainly not paid by these guys. I just love to get people here that have some great information that provide great products for feds and get it out, get the information out. So, so Art, I think a good place to kind of take this conversation is, hey, open season is almost upon us, right? It is almost here. What are some of the biggest things that you think federal employees that are listening or federal retirees for that matter, what do you think they should be thinking about when potentially changing or may, maybe not making a change this, this next open season? Yeah, so a- excellent point. And I would say it's both open season and, and really anytime there's an opportunity, so a life event or something like that. You know, I, I'm old enough where there was, a, there was a commercial for a clothing manufacturer on the East Coast. Um, and he said, an, an educated consumer is our best customer. And, and that's, what I, that's what I would say. And um, I guess I put it into a couple of categories. I've seen you know, some of the YouTube videos, they use cars as an example for this. So I, I think for, for feds, um, you really have to take a look at, at three things. One, you have to have some of the vocabulary down. And, and I know it can be confusing, but there are advisors, there's YouTube, there's Google, you know, to, but you need to have some of the vocabulary. What is a copay versus a coinsurance versus a deductible, right? It's just like buying a car. If, if you don't know what MPG is, if you don't know two wheel from four wheel drive, you're, you're just gonna be from the get go, you're gonna be behind the eight ball. So I, I think you need to spend a little time understanding what, what those things are. And, and there are a lot of people, GHA and others that, that will help you work through that. The second thing is you need to know a little bit about yourself. You know, when I moved from from the East Coast to Iowa, uh, I needed to get a truck because I was three miles on gravel. So I I needed to understand kind of what I was going to use. And I think federal employees need to just take stock of that. What what have you used in healthcare over the last years? Do you have any special prescriptions, um, specialty drugs that you're on? And and also with your healthcare provider, what, what does the next year look like as much as you could you know, telegraph it, or any major surgeries you're thinking of or, or any other treatments you're thinking of, of doing. I, I think you need to spend time doing that. And then the third thing, there are a bunch of calculators out there. Then, then you, you need to put those two pieces of information together and, and look at the calculators. So I would say be active participants in not only your health care, but in choosing your health care and, and what makes the most sense for you. So 
Yeah, no, I, I think that's incredible advice. I think all of us are prone to once we make a decision and it's working fine, at least we don't see any issues with it. Um, it's hard to sometimes go and like, okay, let's actually reevaluate and see if there's better options. Because especially in, in health insurance, it's one of the biggest pieces I see looking through people's entire situation is it's just people haven't looked at it at a, in a long time. And, and things change, especially as people, let's say, start as a 20-year-old federal employee and, and be, you know go into, let's say, Medicare at 65. A lot changes during that time. And most people just don't change their plan at all during that time. Some yeah. people do, but it's rare. Yeah, it's so rare. two things are changing. You're, you're spot on. So we have, for example, we have five different medical plans to, um, to dental plans. And those five plans do exactly what you described. They kind of track somebody over the course of, of their life. They, you know, different personas, right? Whether you're uh, newly starting out, you're kind of young, you're not using that medical care all the way to, you know, you're a retiree and you're, you're on Medicare or, or, you know, you're thinking about it, you're about to age into it. But there's another thing that's really important. So um, as we look at um, just every open season, the plans right. ourselves, we make changes. And so, you know, in this open season, if you look at family, for example, I think I was, ta I was talking to my sales um, person, head of sales the other day, and he was saying that there's like $18,000 difference in premium wow. between, between the highest and lowest family plan. Right, and, right. You know, I, and, and that likelihood is that wasn't exactly the same way or the same amount that it, that it was last year, because every year plans come in, we make changes to deductibles, co-pays, premiums, and so forth. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not just your own lifestyle that can change that you need to keep up with. It's the fact that payers in the space, in any space in health insurance, we're making changes every year. And if you're really not paying attention to that, you're, you're really not optimizing your money, right? You're not putting right. that next dollar where it gives you the most value. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Is just because so you know a plan was working for you last year, it doesn't mean it's planning to do the exact same thing this coming year. So, and, and like you mentioned, Art, so um, GEHA has five plans, right? Um, and like you said, they kind of all do different things. Um, now, one big thing that I talk about all the time, it doesn't make sense for everybody, but it, it often does, is high deductible plan. HSA, that sort of thing. I'm our curious fastest, from your perspective. Fastest growing plan. It really? Is okay, great. It great. Is our fastest growing plan. Because there's so much, especially for those that are fairly relatively healthy, right? I mean, there's so much potential savings, tons of advantages, but that's probably, yeah. I'm glad it's growing because that's one of the things that I almost never see people using, but I'm glad it's certainly on the, on the rise. So. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not a financial planner. I'm not in your space. I, I'm so I caveat this, but, but clearly, you know, the attractiveness is partly the triple tax free um, nature of HDHP, which, which, you know, I, I defer to you to explain and give the nuances on, but that's clearly attractive. I, I think what scares people, obviously, is, is the high deductible element to it. And, and I get that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that's, again, where you need to understand kind of what your own circumstances are, right? right. Do, do you have some funding that's set aside so that if you needed to really hit that highest deductible that you could? Um, and so do you have some, some funding? And to your point, what are your likely healthcare needs, right? What not only what is your track record, but what are you likely to to, to look towards? Um, and you know, I I have uh, four children, and uh, three of them are on uh, the high deductible plans, largely because of the tax advantages um, piece of this. And but it took them a little bit to kind of figure out where they're at and what the plan was and. Mm -hmm. And, and get over that hump, which brings us, you know, to the point we made earlier, I, I made, tried to make an educated consumer is frankly the best customer that we can have because they're going to ask the questions and they're going to understand the differences and we can help them with that. Right. Yeah. And for those listening, for those uh, watching, I've got a whole video on HSAs, high deductible plans. So definitely check that out if you're interested. It doesn't make sense for everyone, but if it does make sense for you, there's, there's tons of advantages. So definitely, definitely check that out. So, so Art, 
one, you know, a lot of things I talk about with viewers is about retirement, meaning a lot of people I talk to, I mean, I, who knows exactly the ages, but they're probably going to be approaching Medicare here in the next, let's call it 10 years, right? Um, certainly, I have younger viewers as well, but I have a lot right in the 40s, 50s, 60s. So as people approach Medicare, what are some of the biggest things to think about during that time zone? Because that certainly is a change when Medicare comes into play. And and what do you suggest people look at during that time? So it's it's part of the same thing you know we talked about. I don't know that there's anything um, significantly different to, to look at. So for example, if, if you know you're about to go on Medicare, then one of the things I would look at is which, which are the Medicare friendly FEHB plans, mm -hmm. right? So our high plan um, gives you monies toward Part B. And so, you know, unless you, unless you did some research on that, right, or unless you're looking at it, then you may say, okay, it, it doesn't matter which plan I'm, I'm going to be on. But in fact, if you want to get some subsidy um, uh, off of payments, then you'd probably want the high plan. And, and so it's the same, it's the same overall theme, kind of, you know, know yourself, kind of know where you're going, and then which plans help you optimize getting there. Yeah, no, that's huge. And I think just understanding that some plans are somewhat designed to be Medicare friendly and some just simply aren't, right? And just knowing that I think will help viewers. Say, okay, let's find one that's that's friendly, that matches all the needs, all the prescriptions, all the things that matches up and it's friendly, amazing, right? Let, let's that, find something. That's, that, that's exactly right. And, and you know, it, again, we talked about it, but it's, it's kind of one of the personas, one of the life stages that, mm -hmm. you know, GHA has, has developed a plan for because right. we know it is, you know, obviously a growing part of the, uh, FEHB population growing part of the national population, obviously. Yeah. Now, one thing I see are sometimes, doesn't happen all the time, but um, as federal employees, they have access to lots of benefits. Certainly, FEHB is, is one of the big ones, but they have access to, of course, dental vision, et cetera. W one mistake I see all the time is people have dental vision, but they've also got an FEHB plan that covers a lot of the same thing, right? Dental vision things. So I guess for, for GEHA, are there any specific plans that do cover dental vision? Maybe not. I'm not familiar, super familiar with all the you know, ins and outs of your plans. Are there any specific that do cover some of those just so some of the viewers have some context there? Yeah. So, so our plans do, uh, do cover the, the vision part, for example. You know, we, we use a, an organization that, that gives access you know, you bring up an interesting point, and, and I'm probably going to be a little bit over my skis, so I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to go there specifically. I can certainly give you the information, but um, on our medical plans, we have some dental coverage. I think right. that's what you're you're alluding to. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't tend to be as specialized and as comprehensive as the FedBIC one. And sure. so, what what we do see often is that um, it will come with the medical coverage. And so obviously people then have it, but typically if somebody, again, knows their needs and, and knows that they're a little, a little more at risk for dental work, or it tends to be a little more specific, um, like orthodontic and so forth, they, they, they typically will look for and be best served by an additional coverage plan, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree, especially if there's big needs. Um, I think for everyone listening and watching here, I think the biggest thing is just know what your FEHB plan covers. Because if you don't have intense dental or vision needs, sometimes that's plenty. You just want to make sure you know what you have so you're not paying twice for the same thing. That's certainly the goal. Absolutely. Um, if, if you obviously. think your needs are going to be on the, on the lighter end or you're willing to you know, go more at risk for yourself, then you, you may not need the separate thing. Um, absolutely. It really depends on what your needs are, which is kind of the, one of the themes uh, that, you know, we've talked about. You really need to know um, how you use healthcare and how you want to use healthcare, how you expect to use it. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And I think that's one of the beauties of FEHB is some people get very nervous to make changes to their plans. And I always tell people, hey, even, even when you're going into retirement, you can make changes every year there then, right? If, if something changes, if your life changes, the beauty of FEHB is every year you could change it, right? Based on your needs, based on how your health is changing. Because certainly across retirement, people's um, needs are going to change. So 
I, I think that's always comforting to know is, hey, whatever changes we make now, if we're nervous to make a change, hey, it's going to be okay. We could always change back later or whatever, right? There's options, which options are king when it comes to yeah. any plan. So. Yeah, and I, I think it's also a matter of, you know, what, what the nervousness is based in, right? So some of it, some of it right off the bat, you know, I, I hear, right? I heard on the provider side, I hear it on the payer side now that I'm here. I mean, you know, is my, is my physician is my ancillary healthcare providers, is my, you know, preferred hospital, are they in network? Um, mm-hmm. And usually that's pretty quick lookup, right? For, for any, any person to be able to say, okay, I've got XYZ plan. I want to go to, you know, ABC plan with another company and to do a provider search and to see, and, and usually that's one of the biggest, mm-hmm. you know, the biggest issues people have in, in terms of switching is you don't, you know, if you have, healthcare providers and, and specialists you're comfortable with, you don't want to necessarily change. These days, a lot of the networks are fairly comprehensive. And mm-hmm. so the likelihood that you're going to have, I'm not going to guarantee, right? There's a lot right. of rural exactly. parts of the country. I've lived in rural parts of the country, but in a lot of parts of the country there, you know, a, a, a lot of the payers networks tend to overlap. Um, and so that could be one of the things you can, you can take right off the table. And then, as I said, if, if you know you've got a couple of specialty, either physicians or, or specialty drugs, and certainly, you know, you call up, call up GHA, you call up, you know, any payer you're thinking about and say, hey, here's a specialty drug. How do you handle it? Is it in formulary? Is it not? What's my, you know, what's my take on it likely to be? Those tend to be the, the biggest issues. If, if somebody really thinks about it, aside from inertia, right? It mm-hmm. tends to be the biggest issues. And, and with a phone call or Google or such, you, you can probably get those off, off the plate pretty quickly. Yeah, no, agreed. I think, again, information is power. And, and I guess um, semi wrapping up this call, um, at GEHA, you, you know, you certainly said, hey, every year, every plan changes, right? Every plan changes. I guess what direction do you see um, I guess the industry in general going and what do you see GEHA? I get, you know, certainly what are you guys doing over time to make sure, Hey, over time, the plan still makes sense for, for all these different types of people. What, what can federal employees expect? Let's say they're on a GEHA plan or they're going to be, what could they expect kind of moving forward? What direction do you think things are going? Yeah. So one is, uh, you know, we, we kind of hinted at it, you know, for, for a while, um, High deductible health plans weren't even in the FEHB space, right. and and ourselves and others saw that in in the private sector uh, saw that it was great, uh, potentially great for members, uh, at least certain members, and we brought it into that space. And as I said, it's it's one of the fastest growing at this point. And so I, my commitment to federal employees and military retirees is is, is that that's what we're going to keep on doing. We're gonna we're gonna keep looking at the private sector if there is innovation there. We'll mm-hmm. make sure that that gets brought into the FEHB space so that um, federal workers have the same access to the same kind of plans and options and 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 um, you know benefits basically that private sector workers have. And uh, you know we have five plans, but we have a slot or two for for other plans. And so we're always thinking about where should we be going next? And mm-hmm. part of that is a look at the, as I said, the competitive landscape, especially in the private sector. And the other is talking to our members because we're a member benefit association. We talk to our members in terms of what changes they would like to see in, in their benefits moving forward as, as the world changes. So, Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And so I think for everyone viewing and listening, I hope this is, especially as we move into open season, I hope for everybody here that it's just a, a reminder, a kick in the pants, if you will, say, okay, let's take a look at what, what you got, open it up, right? Take the however long it takes, the hours, however long the weekend, open up what plan do you have, right? What plans are available in your area? What is going to do the best job for you? If you're going to a big life change, let's make the change, whether it's me- get on Medicare, whether it's, hey, your, your kids are, are going to age out of your plans. Or what, what changes do you need to make to make sure that uh, you're always squared and have the best plan for you? Now, Art, um, as the last question, before we end this, is there anything else you think federal employees should know moving into open season and just in general that you think would provide value for them? 
I'm just going to give the example uh, to reinforce what you said. You said it in, in very um, uh, broad terms, I think the right terms. I'm just going to give you just a, kind of bring it home if you can. So, you know, inflation is what it is. We're all looking for ways to cut back. What if you were one of those federal employees that were sitting there with a family plan and you were paying that five, 10, 15, $18,000 more than you needed to because you didn't do the research? How bad would you feel? And so that's what I would leave you with. Just make sure it's your money. You work hard for it. Make sure you're not leaving any of your money on the table. Do the research. Great way to end. Well, thanks for being here, Art. Here, Art. And uh, for everyone listening, thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure. And uh, we're always going to have in- interesting guests and interesting information for you guys every single week. And we'll see you guys next time.